Weekly concept. Helping the community. Essential question. In what ways can you help your community? Planting hope. People help their communities in different ways. Volunteering at the library, coaching soccer, or turning a vacant lot into a community garden are just some of the ways that people give back to their communities. How do people in your community help each other? What are some things that you could do to help your community? Talk about it. Write words that tell how you can help your community. Then talk to a partner about community projects that you would like to make happen. Vocabulary. Use the picture and the sentences to talk with the partner about each word. Assigned. The teacher assigned the student extra homework because he was late. Generosity. The man showed his generosity by putting twenty dollars in the can for charity. Generosity. Generosity means a willingness and happiness to share in an unselfish way. Generosity. Generosity means a willingness and happiness to share in an unselfish way. Gingerly. The girl stepped gingerly into the waves. Mature. Tom's father said that he was mature enough to ride the train by himself. Organizations. Students signed up for information about recycling organizations. Residents. Mrs. Seals enjoys talking with the residents of the nursing home. Scattered. The sheep were scattered across the meadow. Scattered. To be scattered is to be spread or thrown about. Scattered. To be scattered is to be spread or thrown about. Selective. Tina was selective about choosing only the freshest fruits and vegetables. Selective. 
When you are selective, you are very careful with making choices. Selective. When you are selective, you are very careful with making choices. Your turn. Pick three words. Write three questions for your partner to answer. Genre: Realistic fiction. Remembering Hurricane Katrina. Essential question: In what ways can you help your community? Read about how Hector helps others after Hurricane Katrina. Leaning over my steering wheel, I watched the heavy clouds roll in. The sky became a darker shade of gray, and raindrops were soon scattered across my windshield. A storm was coming. Glancing at the boxes of clothes stacked in the back seat, I smiled to myself. A torrential downpour of rain began beating against my windshield as lightning flickered across the sky. I pulled the car off the road until my driving visibility improved. People on the sidewalk held purses and briefcases over their heads, in a futile effort to keep from getting wet. Children screamed and danced around in the downpour. The rain reminded me of another storm ten years earlier. Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast of the United States when I was nine years old. The ferocious storm caused untold amounts of damage. One of my strongest memories from that time was watching the evening news with my aunt. A reporter stood inside the Houston Astrodome, surrounded by thousands of people. They all shared the same weary expression. Many wore torn and dirty clothes, and some had no shoes on their feet. They slowly shuffled along, their faces full of sadness. Are they here because of the hurricane? I asked softly. Aunt Lucia nodded. See, si, Hector, these people are from New Orleans, Louisiana. Just a few days ago, Hurricane Katrina destroyed their homes and possessions, and they lost everything they owned. So now they are temporary residents of the Astrodome. It's a place for them to stay until it's safe to go home. I knew a lot about Katrina. The storm had formed in hot and humid tropical weather, and then traveled north. It had come so close to Texas that I worried it would strike us in Houston. It missed us, but other cities were not so lucky. The TV news reporter looked around. People tried to speak to her, but she was being selective about whom she wanted to interview. I noticed a little boy sitting behind her on a cot, hugging an old teddy bear. Watching him, I knew I had to do something. The next day, my friends joined me at our volunteer club, the Houston Helpers, and together we devised a plan. We wanted to collect toys and give them to the kids at the Astrodome, because donating the toys would help bring some happiness into the lives of these families. Anxious to get started, we made lists of what we needed to do. Then every one of us was assigned a specific task. We agreed to spread the word to our schools and other organizations. Three days later, after a Herculean effort on our part, the donation bins were overflowing with new toys. I'll never forget the day when we entered the Astrodome with our gifts. Children flew toward us from all directions. Smiles lit up their faces as we pulled toys from our bags. Grateful parents thanked us for our generosity. And complimented our group leaders on how thoughtful and mature we all were. Bzzz. My cell phone jolted me back to the present, 
and I noticed that the storm had passed. Hector? See, si, yes, hi, Jeannie. Do you have the donations? A few more families have arrived, more victims of yesterday's tornado. Yes, I have the clothing donations. The storm delayed me, but I'll be there soon. I gingerly eased my car into the suddenly busy traffic. It felt good to know that I was making a difference again. Make connections. Talk about how Hector and his friends make a difference in their community. What are some things that you have done to help your school or community? Visualize. When you read fiction, picture the events, characters, and setting in your mind to help you better understand the story. As you read Remembering Hurricane Katrina, visualize what happens in the story. Find text evidence. In the first two paragraphs of Remembering Hurricane Katrina on page 181, I can use the details to picture the setting. The narrator describes the rain, the lightning, and the people on the sidewalk holding briefcases and purses over their heads. Leaning over my steering wheel, I watched the heavy clouds roll in. The sky became a darker shade of gray, and raindrops were soon scattered across my windshield. A storm was coming. Glancing at the boxes of clothes stacked in the back seat, I smiled to myself. A torrential downpour of rain began beating against my windshield as lightning flickered across the sky. I pulled the car off the road until my driving visibility improved. People on the sidewalk held purses and briefcases over their heads in a futile effort to keep from getting wet. Children screamed and danced around in the downpour. The rain reminded me of another storm ten years earlier. Hurricane Katrina slammed into the Gulf Coast of the United States when I was nine years old. The ferocious storm caused untold amounts of damage. I can use these descriptive details to visualize what the setting looks and sounds like. Your turn. Visualize the scene between Hector and his aunt as they watch the news report. Describe what you see to a partner. As you read, remember to use the strategy Visualize. Point of View The narrator's point of view tells how the narrator thinks or feels about characters or events in the story. When the narrator uses the pronouns I, me, or my, the story is told by a first-person narrator. Find text evidence. When I reread page 151 of Remembering Hurricane Katrina, I see that the narrator uses the pronouns I, me, and my. That tells me the story is told by a first-person narrator, Hector. I can find clues in the text about the narrator's point of view. Graphic Organizer Details Hector remembers watching the hurricane victims slowly shuffling along with faces full of sadness. Hector noticed a little boy hugging an old teddy bear and realized he had to do something. Point of view, the narrator, Hector, thinks it is important to help the hurricane victims. Your turn. Reread Remembering Hurricane Katrina. Find other details that tell the point of view. Realistic Fiction The selection Remembering Hurricane Katrina is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction is a made-up story. It includes realistic characters, events, and settings. Usually has dialogue. May include a flashback to an earlier event. Find text evidence. I can tell Remembering Hurricane Katrina is realistic fiction. The characters, 
events, and setting could all exist in real life. The story has dialogue and includes a flashback. Flashback Sometimes authors do not present a story's events in time order. Authors might take the reader back to an event that happened in the past. This is called a flashback. Your turn. Find and list two more examples in Remembering Hurricane Katrina that show it is realistic fiction. Context Clues As you read Remembering Hurricane Katrina, you may come across a word that you don't know. A definition of the word may be in the text nearby, or the word may be restated in a simpler way. Sometimes an example may be given. You can use these context clues to figure out the word's meaning. Find text evidence. When I read the fifth paragraph on page 182 of Remembering Hurricane Katrina, the phrase, collect toys and give them, helps me figure out what the word donating means. We wanted to collect toys and give them to the kids at the Astrodome because donating the toys would help bring some happiness into the lives of these families. Your turn. Use context clues to figure out the meanings of the following words in Remembering Hurricane Katrina. Shuffled, page 181. Possessions, page 182. Delayed, page 183. Write about the text. I responded to the prompt, Add descriptive details and dialogue to the scene in which the Houston helpers give the toys to the children at the Astrodome. The sounds of running feet and happy voices echoed through the Astrodome. Then one tiny girl with brown eyes shyly approached me. I am feeling lonely without my favorite teddy bear, she said. Do you have any stuffed animals? I dug through the bag until I felt something soft and furry. I pulled out a fuzzy white bear. Maybe he can be a new friend, I said as I handed her the bear. Thank you, she said, hugging it tightly to her chest. Strong words. I used sensory details to help readers visualize the scene. Grammar. This is an example of the present progressive verb tense. Dialogue. I wrote realistic dialogue that shows my character cares about others. Inferences. I drew inferences about what the characters would say and do. Your turn. Add descriptive details and dialogue to the scene in which the Houston helpers devise a plan to help children at the Astrodome. 